Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and finally we will continue with our Bhagavad Gita series. We started with the Bhagavad Gita long back but due to some reason I had halted it in between and now here we are starting again. And we had started and completed the first chapter. If you have not watched the videos then please go and watch it. There are almost 40 or 30, 35 or 40 videos near about. And in between, I had also started the Queen Kunti prayers, which are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That is very essential uh, to know because that will give us a proper mood to understand the Gita. Because uh, they say that uh, if you do not have faith in Krishna, then the Gita is useless. You will read it, but you will not understand anything. Okay. So to gain faith in Lord Krishna's words, we need to understand how great he is and we need to understand his greatness from the great souls. As in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Mahajano Yena Gata Sapanta, that we should learn from the great authorities. And Srimad Bhagavatam says there are 12 Mahajans. Swayam Bhu Narada Shambhu Kumaro Kapilo Manu Pralado Janako Bhishmo Balirvaya Sakhi Vayam I've also made a video on 12 margins. If you have not watched it, then please go and watch it. Okay. So here we will discuss today uh, the next part of Queen Kunti's prayers. We all know who Queen, Queen Kunti is. She is the mother of the Pandavas, the most illustrious and the most virtual, the most spiritual and the most noble of all the people in the Mahabharat, of course, including Bhishma Pitama, of course, and Draupadi. So Kunti is uh, singing these prayers after the Kukshetra war has ended and her entire dynasty has almost been obliterated in the war. Nobody has remained except the Pandavas and a few others and Parikshit Maharaj of course who later on went to be the emperor of the entire universe. And now when Lord Krishna is about to leave towards his own kingdom after the war has been uh, finished, uh, has been and the result of the war is achieved that Yudhishthira Maharaj is now the king and now Krishna is planning to depart back to Dwarka. So Queen Kunti is not very happy and so she is singing these prayers. So I had already made the first prayer and this is the second or this is the third I guess. Here you go. So now what happens is Queen Kunti starts speaking again. All right. And if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your life or your marriage or your career or your health, then you can go to my website to book a reading. You will find the link to my website in the description section of my videos below. Okay. And before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 8th Chapter, 20th Verse, 1.8.20. Text number 20. So, the shloka goes like this. So, we will read the shloka and then some of the words and then the translation and then the purport. Alright? So, the shloka is like this. Tatha paramahamsanam muninam amalatmanam bhakti yoga vidhanartham katham pasya mahistriyaha. So, what are the words here? Tatha means besides that. Paramahamsanam of the advanced transcendentalists. Paramahamsas are the greatly elevated spiritual personalities. Muninam, the greatest of the philosophers or mental speculators. As they say, he is a Muni. Muni means one who speculates very much. And he is a very great philosopher. That's the difference between a Paramahamsa and a Muni. A Muni is not necessarily a very greatly elevated personality spiritually, but he can also be a great thinker. But Paramahamsas are greatly elevated spiritualities. Amalatmana. Those whose minds are competent to discern between spirit and matter. See, mala means dirt, which is actually referring to material desires. That is like dirt because that contaminates the soul externally. Okay, Because the soul forgets his link with God Almighty and then he starts delighting in materialistic enjoyment and then later on he becomes attached and he suffers later on so amala means one who has no dirt which means a person who is completely free from material desires atmanam atmanam means one who is fixed in the concept of atma which means one who is completely self-realized so amala atmanam 
the greatly pure personalities who are competent to discern between matter and spirit that means they know the difference between spirit and matter bhakti yoga the science of devotional service vidhanartham for executing katham how pashima can observe he certainly striya women wow beautiful this is <clears throat> so now we will read the translation you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service and to the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit how then can we women know you perfectly wow so she is saying you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service and in the bhagavatam also it is said there is a shloka which says dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam which means that what is dharma there is a big confusion these days you will see posts in different internet forums and you will see videos in youtube there is a big discussion on what dharma is what karma is <laughs> people don't know what dharma is dharma means they think what religion is yes so for a hindu his dharma is he is a he should read vedas gita upanishad puran etc for a muslim his dharma is he should read the quran for a christian his dharma is probably to read the bible and then it keeps going like this but what is dharma dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam it means that what dharma is and what dharma is not that is directly defined by the supreme personality of godhead bhagavat pranit pranitam means god himself defines what is dharma okay so if you need if you want to know what dharma is then you have to know what god is telling and for that you have to read the scriptures so it's written here that you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service that means you yourself come how do you come you come in the form of the avatars yes you have taken so many avatars and you yourself descend descend means to come to this world and to be like one of us like lord ram was he is known as maryada purushottam although he is god himself but he used to behave as if he is like a normal human being like given me then lord krishna also although they exhibited superhuman qualities of god time to time but primarily they behaved like human beings like given me so you yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service unto whom unto the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists paramahamsa naam and mental speculators muni naam who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit and this is the reference to the word amalatma naam so it said here that you descend in the to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service unto the hearts of advanced transcendentalists now somebody may think that oh that means i am not advanced in my transcendental a uh, realization transcendental means that which is beyond material conception of reality which means which deals at a level of spirit okay so that's the meaning of transcendental so advanced transcendentalists which means that those who are very greatly elevated in their spiritual realizations that means they have realized that they are spirit soul themselves and they are connected to god they are part and parcel of god that is what they have realized and mental speculators also mental speculators here in general doesn't mean the people who are speculating on science and technology but it primarily means those who are speculating about god that who god is god is like this god is like that he is god she is god who are being purified who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit so it is said here that these personalities are like amalatmanas that means they can very clearly distinguish between what is matter and what is spirit which means that they do not get entangled in materialistic things especially in sinful activities because they know that i am a spirit soul and if i indulge in materialistic activities then beyond a certain extent especially sinful activities and habits then that will not give me fulfillment in life that will degrade my consciousness that is what is the meaning of the word that they are being able to discriminate between matter and spirit how then can we women know you perfectly wow <laughs> she's saying that 
you are to be understood by all these great personalities muni naam amal atma naam yes paramahamsa then she saying how then can we women know you perfectly wow <laughs> and the chapter in the shrimad bhagavatam is known as teachings of queen kunti 3 the most intelligent woman okay so it is said she is the most intelligent woman but now here she is telling oh my god how then can we women know you perfectly so that means women cannot know god she is thinking like this <laughs> she is thinking because of her humility she is feeling like that okay because she is a great soul she is greatly elevated spiritually and one of the traits of a great soul is he always he or she always feels that he is very inferior that is not inferiority complex that is a expression of their humility because they know how great god is so even if they are great they always feel that there's something wrong with them like yudhishthira maharaj always used to feel that he is the cause of all problems he is the cause of all trouble because of his greed the entire dynasty was extinguished he used to feel like that although that was not the case the um, the main the only reason for the kurukshetra war was the greed of duryodhana and his bad association of people like dushasan karana and shakuni these four were the main culprits of the kurukshetra war not main they were the only culprits of course but yudhishthira maharaj was so great that he used to feel that because of me because of my greed to sit in the throne i killed all of these people <laughs> and then lord krishna tried his best to convince but even krishna could not convince and then maharishi vyas the author of all the scriptures tried to convince him but he could not convince and lord vishnu lord krishna as the parmatma the four handed form in yudhishthir maharaj's heart also tried to convince him but yudhishthir maharaj was not convinced that he is not the cause of the killings which happened in the kurukshetra war but later on when lord krishna told him that now you go to bhishma pitama and learn the lessons on divinity and politics and culture and religion spirituality then yudhishthira maharaj was finally convinced that yes it's not because of me <laughs> okay so that's the trait of great souls because suppose um there's a feminist who is reading this statement how how then can we women know you perfectly she will get very angry when she sees this or hears this because she will think oh queen kunti is a victim of inferiority complex maybe she thinks women can't know god no can you imagine she's directly seeing god in front of in face to face she's directly seeing she doesn't need to do penance okay <coughs> but still she's telling how then can we women know you perfectly So now the purport the explanation to this translation this verse even the greatest philosophical speculators cannot have access to the region of the lord it is said in the upanishads that the supreme truth the absolute personality of godhead is beyond the range of the thinking power of the greatest philosopher even the greatest philosophical speculators cannot have access to the region of the lord which means that if you keep speculating for 1000 years or oh, maybe god is like this maybe god is like that it will not happen ultimately unless god wants that you know him he will not reveal himself to you you can do whatever you want but god has to be willing to reveal himself because spiritual perfection cannot be earned it has to be awarded should i repeat spiritual perfection cannot be earned it has to be awarded it is awarded actually which means whatever you do all the yagyas and mantras and pujas and yantras and tantras and mudras <laughs> you read a million shlokas million scriptures but you will still not make advancement until the time god decides that yes now i want him to advance okay but don't worry if you do that then god will be happy with you and by that god will bless you and then you will advance so nobody makes spiritual advancement by the dint of his own spiritual practices he will do spiritual practices and then god will acknowledge that he is doing whatever my uh, whatever i had said like krishna has given us the scriptures and the scriptures say that we should do this we should do that so when we do that then god will be happy that you have acknowledged his words and then by that he will cleanse your material desires and he will give you spiritual elevation by that but without that 
it cannot happen so that's what is stated here even the greatest philosophical speculators cannot have access to the region of the lord it is said in the upanishads that the supreme truth the absolute personality of godhead is beyond the range of the thinking power of the greatest philosopher which means that how much ever you are great as a philosopher how much ever you are intelligent you cannot understand god it is not possible because he is beyond the range of intelligence it's written he is beyond the range of thinking power of the greatest philosopher okay he is unknowable by great learning or by the greatest brain so you may be a scientist or a movie star or a politician or whoever it doesn't matter he is unknowable by great learning or by the greatest brain not by great brains by the greatest brain also you cannot know him because he is beyond all this he is knowable only by one who has his mercy now you see should i repeat he is knowable only by one who has his mercy that means only when god gives you his mercy then you can know who he is others may go on thinking about him for years together yet he is unknowable so it said that you may go on thinking about him uh, who he is he is like this he is like that where he stays what he does but yet he is unknowable you see this very fact is corroborated by the queen who is playing the part of an innocent woman so queen kunti is acknowledging this fact that you are so great that nobody can understand you by their own efforts okay unless you want them to know you it can't happen that is what she is telling women in general are unable to speculate like philosophers but they are blessed by the lord because they believe at once in the superiority and al- almightiness of the lord and thus they offer obeisances without reservation so it said here that women are more simple by nature and they accept things more easily than men because if you tell a man that oh you know there's god you do this do that he will think at least twice thrice oh yeah god is there but why is this like this why is that like that <laughs> but in general in my experience also and you will also see that if you go and tell a lady oh god is there you know you go to temple you pay obeisances then they will do it without any hesitation they will not ask you 10 questions okay it's not uh, this does not mean that asking questions is bad but it simply means that uh, they generally uh, are having this innocence that they can accept things more easily without reservation okay the lord is so kind that he does not show special favor only to one who is a great philosopher he shows th- he knows the sincerity of purpose okay so basically if somebody is a great philosopher it does not mean that god will only bless him god will see how sincere you are so sincerity is seen by the actions so how to know if somebody is sincere in spiritual life you will see his or her daily actions in life okay so they will always be doing the spiritual practices diligently and they will maintain their connection to god and to gurus and their superiors and that is how you know that they are sincere so it's said that he knows the sincerity of purpose so if the purpose is strong then the sincerity is also there externally for this reason on reason only women generally assemble in great number in any sort of religious function in every country and in every sect of religion it appears that the women are more interested than the men in religious circles the simple this simplicity of acceptance of the lord's authority is more effective than than showy insincere religious fervor so basically this means that it is more important to have faith inside rather than showing off externally that i am doing this i am doing that now this does not mean that you are not supposed to do things externally because if if i say that oh it is important to have faith in inside then people will say oh yeah yeah you are right that means we don't have to go to temples we don't have to do anything but the main thing here is that we should do things externally but also internally we should have faith so externally if you are doing things and internally we are not having faith then it is not going to work because 
faith is the password to the bhagavad gita should i repeat faith is the password to the bhagavad gita if the faith is not there that krishna is the supreme and he will give me ultimate perfection then all the activities will not yield that result that desired result which the scriptures promise okay so basically that is what is said here that queen kunti is so humble that she is telling to krishna that you are so great that even these people munis amalatmanas the paramahamsas only they can understand you but how can a ordinary lady like me understand you she is saying like this <laughs> even though she is so great she is so elevated that her prayers are there in the shrimad bhagavatam i don't i have not written any prayers which are there in bhagavatam neither have you written any prayers but imagine the prayers of this lady that is there in the shrimad bhagavatam that means how great she is but she is still feeling like this okay so that shows how humble she is inside how elevated she is internally okay so that is what i wanted to say and we will continue with the next shloka the next shloka from this chapter itself when and finally when we finish the queen kunti prayers we will again start with the second chapter of the gita okay so there you go if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how to become humble and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then you can go to my website and book a reading you will find the link to the website in the description section of this video below okay and before i end as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you